Hello ladies and gentlemen, Lorenzo here and welcome to the 13th episode of KSP to Mars. Today we will be attempting something audacious. We are going in the 13th episode. For many people an unlucky number but Jebediah does not agree. We are trying to repeat last episode's mission but this time obviously successfully. Jebediah will attempt to get into orbit, a polar orbit this time, so we will need a little bit of additional delta V. Let's have a look. Oh shit, I was meant to remove the batteries that are bolted to the pod to get it, give us a little bit of extra delta V, but well, I did not, so we don't have the extra rocket power. Although we should, we could have just enough. Anyway, returning to my amazing story, Jebediah will today attempt to reach orbit and safely re-enter. He's using the exact same rocket as Shepard, what was his name, Shepful, Shepner, something like that, the guy that died last episode. He's using the same rocket, but there is one important difference. First, the fuel tanks are larger, so we have less parts, which should make for a smoother running game and rocket, but not much else. More importantly, I've installed the updated Deadly Re-Entry plugin. We are now at version 4.3, whereas before I had 4.1. I was under the impression that Deadly Re-Entry Deadly re 4.1 worked with the real solar system out of the box. And it did work in the sense that all the parts work and the game didn't crash and so on and so forth. But it wasn't balanced for it. So our re-entering probes never really stood a chance. We can explain this away by just saying that these uh, heat shield tiles were made by a shoddy manufacturer and that's why two of our guys died. Well, sad for them, but that's the state of things. Now though, we are with Deadly Reentry version 4.3, complete with solar panels uh, with heat shields that should function properly. So we're going to attempt to get in a polar orbit. We need about 400 meters per second of delta V more than we need for an equatorial one. However, on the last episode's rocket we had about 40 units of fuel left, which, according to my gut feeling instincts, correspond to about that 400 meters per second. Either way, the failure state is that we just don't make uh, orbit, that's it's just a hair, uh, that we're just a hair under establishing orbit and if that's the case we still get to test out the new and improved heat shield so either way we should get some interesting information you might recall from one of the previous episodes i have set the kerbals to not respawn so we're taking the legendary jebediah today which is quite a risk because if he dies he is not coming back at least not immediately i think these orange suited guys they have a little bit of an exception in the crew roster they do tend to come back quite often even uh, but I'm not sure if this is the case with the Kerbal respawning set to off either way we might have to recruit some new Kerbals sometime soon anyway I'm launching again into orbit and this is a process that takes many minutes because of the largeness of the planet if this first state separation goes well we are well on our way and then I will cut to the last stage and talk to you there. So coming up on that separation now and after which we are going to pitch over a bit. So let's have a look, separating that and now I will cut out Fade to Black and rejoin you when and if something interesting happens. So see you then. So welcome back. Here we are, although it was only half a second of a transition for you, it was about 10 minutes for me. We are again almost in orbit. We are also again almost out of fuel, but this launcher just packs enough of a punch. It's a close deal, but we managed to make it. I think I managed to do a somewhat more efficient ascent this time around by throttling back quite severely while under SRB power, uh, thereby not wasting as much liquid fuel as I would have in any other situation. And now I have a rather high apoapsis, so I'm going to cut the engine and wait for it. Well, rather high a modest 185, 158 kilometers and we have 26 units of liquid fuel left so we have to be thrifty but we can use a maneuver node to round out the orbit and make that be stable. The good news is even if we can't make a stable orbit we will pass over the polar ice caps 
which means that we get to do the EVA report there and get science points back home. Not a lot, but we will get science. The brunt of the science this, this time around will be, of course, the uh, return of the capsule. If we can make it, that is. I'm going to try the same thing I did uh, before. That is, um, lower the, the orbit to as to have a periapsis of about 60... Uh, well, let's go for 75 kilometers, a little bit higher. Because... Even though the re-entry was nice and gentle, it was also definite. So we can go with a more gentle approach, I think. So with 20 units of fuel remaining, it's almost as though this mission was planned. And here we are with a nicely circular orbit, 158 kilometers by 146. And you can see on this real scale Kerbin, that is barely a hair above the atmosphere and indeed around the planet. So pretty well done so far if I do say so myself let's pop Jebediah our main man outside and let him have a peek ooh that looks good let him have a peek at the surroundings Kerbin's highlands again and that is for us useless so I'm going to time accelerate to the polar ice caps that's a bit of a double term I can just say the poles or the ice caps either way whatever I want to call them here they are Let's leave the map view. Ooh, a nice atmospheric view. It has some unex unexpected sights, this real solar system monarchy. A crew report. Oh no, those don't go. We have to go on EVA and then take a look around. Again, a good vista. Get that EVA report just above Kerbin's ice caps. And that is also where we will be attempting to land. So keep this data get back inside and radio that home in case you do get incinerated and you can re you can radio these reports for 100% science anyway we have a southern ice cap as well so i suppose we're heading towards the periaps i suppose i can lower the orbit from this end and put our periapses inside the atmosphere at that ice cap mm. Let's see, I need to move it a little bit closer. This is almost the perfect moment for a burn, as it turns out. So we want to go for, I'm going to go for 80 kilometers. And the nice thing about the polar orbit is that, oh wait, is that the periapsis, if we put it over there, won't drift too much, but I want to put it all the way to the side. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, this is the next orbit. No, I'm going to have to do the maneuver node at the south pole, which is no no worries, really. And then we're going to attempt to land on the north pole. Not the largest target, but I think it's surrounded by mountains, which is fine because those biomes we haven't explored either. So, if we put it here, we have the periapsis here. And I think that is pretty good. I'm going to put it at the start of the poles because of course way before we hit the periapsis we will be in the atmosphere already which will be slowing us down which will be well causing us not to hit the pole 81 kilometers that's fine 22 meter per second burn that's also fine as before I am going to cut the video and talk to you when we are properly inside the atmosphere and interesting things are happening so see you there enjoy the view for a bit we are in orbit Jebediah is in orbit we are now an orbit capable species not much else but that no one is going to take away from us yes right on and here we are once again entering the atmosphere in a rocket with a heat shield that has never landed before successfully. Nevertheless, Jebediah is optimistic, as am I. We have the updated heat shields and everything still looks like a good plan. I put the periapsis at... Ooh, I put it at 75, but we are already dropping. See, we entered... Oh, I have no idea what happened. Why is the periapsis here and not... Oh, no, the periapsis is over the pole. I put it at 75, but it is already rapidly decreasing. Uh, that means we are already slowing down, even at the high altitude. We are still 98 kilometers. Uh, this also means that probably we again won't make it to the poles. 
The problem is I think that this planet is now 6,000 kilometers across and not 600. So I am grossly misjudging most of these distances and places where to put the periapsis. It does also mean that we have a very shallow entry trajectory and I think that's something we can work with. Now to re-estimate where we will be landing. It might be on land, I hope it's on land because then we can do some science, get some soil samples. But if it's in water it's also fine because then we get the, uh, the science of recovering a craft that has successfully reached orbit, which should be a fair amount of points as well. We have a little bit of fuel in the tanks, I'm going to burn that off now, so as to slow down on the rocket and to not have the heat shield uh, be responsible for this deceleration. It's nowhere near enough, it's not even an appreciable fraction of the speed, well it is actually, it's a few hundred meters per second, like two or three hundred. Not a lot to make a life or death difference I don't think, but any bit is better than no bits and by now it's burnt out so I'm ditching this rocket stage and now we are in the familiar situation again of having just a capsule with the heat shield and we are on a shallow re-entry corridor. I'm hoping it will go well, better than last time at any rate and we have now the real solar system compatible heat shields or so the readme from that re-entry told me. We have told nothing of this to Jebediah of course, we just told him we got an awesome rocket with a lot of boosters because I had about 12 of those. And he's still remembering that, look at his face, smiling broadly. We're not decelerating at any appreciable fraction yet, so I'm going to try physics time warp because otherwise this will take a horrendously long time. So here goes with the physics time warp times two times three times four. I think with just a pod we are we will get away with this. I will stop it as soon as this pod starts appreciably heating up. So we are almost zero degrees now, 85 kilometers in altitude. I must remember not to touch any controls because that will probably tumble the pod out of control at this physics time warp. We are now reaching the altitude where we can expect some significant heating so I am returning the warp factor to one. And no, we are not in fact piloting anything as fancy as the Enterprise but still we get to control warp factors. Isn't that great? Here we get our first heating effects and so far everything looks good just as it did with Shepard's, Shepard's, I forgot his name already, isn't that a shame? He died for the cause and I forgot his name, it was Shep something. So, so far everything looks eerily similar to last episode, we are decelerating at about half a G, 7 kilometers per second to scrub. Well, those 300 meters per second should be fine once that 7 has been scrubbed. I'm going to pay extra attention to keep the capsule oriented exactly in the direction of the heat flow. We are dropping quite rapidly, I have a feeling we might be dropping too rapidly. We are decelerating now at a full G and the heat shield, oh no, I was looking at the electric charge here, I thought that was depleting, it is not the heat shield of course, um, we have to see whether it's ablating or not. We are now at 7 kilometers per second, slowing down at a full G and heating up appreciably, we're at 300 degrees for the heat shield and also 300 degrees for the capsule. That is something that we cannot abide because the capsule cannot get too hot. Maybe what's happening is that our trajectory is too shallow that we are just slowly heating up and cooking. But still I think the, the heat shield should ablate more and cool this capsule. Maybe if I rotate it a bit, keep it pointing into the direction of the travel. Is the heat shield now appreciably hotter than the capsule? It is a bit hotter, it's at 800 degrees, whereas the capsule is now also at 800 degrees. Well, I think this is going to go wrong, we're at 4 5 Gs again. Slowing down. We are slowing down a lot faster than last time, or we're racking up the Gs faster, so that probably means that we are on a steeper trajectory. I'm hoping the ca why is this capsule getting so hot? It's getting straight past the heat shield. We're going to we're going to explode. What is up with this? I'm pissed off now. I don't know what is the why this happens. I'm going to go off into the forums and complain about it or at least ask opinions because well, if you know what's going on, please tell me, but uh, the heat shield is doing fine. It's heating up. It's not shielding anything apparently. Because the capsule behind it just heats up the same. Maybe I should add an extra heat shield, but the command pod does say it has one built in. Either way, 
Jebediah is now dead. Maybe the space program can become sane. And we have achieved a wonderful, if somewhat unspectacular, 8 science points. If we have a look at the R&D building here. 31 points, not enough to buy anything. We need 90, remember? So, whatever we're going to do, uh, we are not in a good shape to fly to the moon or to solar space or even to high orbit, I don't think. So, what we're going to do is to explore more biomes and land things there. So, some way, somehow, we have to figure out a way to get through this atmosphere. And I'm going to the internet to find out why this heat shield isn't working because if it is working all we have to do is to figure out how to pinpoint a landing site which is something that we should be able to do and then we can get lots of science done by putting things on the ground and sciencing them anyway this was Lorenzo thanks for watching frustrated now I need to find out how these heat shields work and I'm going to and then I will make tomorrow's episode before doing that let's get some more kerbals we like the ones with double bars and otherwise, we want to go for courage. It does not look good once these are, well, let's call it depleted. We don't have the most courageous ones left. If we look at our lost list, Jebediah is unfortunately dead. Fred Burry was crushed by G-forces. And Shepner shares the same fate as Jebediah, killed by unreliable heat shields. So, this was Lorenzo. Thanks for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe, and see you for next episode. Goodbye.